13 News Now begins with breaking news. And that breaking news takes us to Portsmouth, where a woman is dead after a shooting. Let's go to 13 News Now reporter Robert Boyd, who was live near the crime scene, Portsmouth Boulevard and Des Moines Avenue. Robert. Yes, uh, Regina and Janet, very sad news for the city of Fort Smith. The first homicide of 2018, and it happened about an hour ago. A woman shot and killed on the streets right here, uh, Des Moines and Port Smith. Again, around 3 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, her body uh, found outside of a couple businesses, one of them actually a flower shop business. Uh, all we know right now is shot and killed. Uh, we're not sure of her name or age, any of that information. And I'm actually going to bring in um, Detective Misty Holly with the Port Smith Police Department. Uh, tell us, uh, Misty, about this shooting. And how about any suspects at this time? Hi, Rob. Um, right now, we don't know too much about the situation. All we know is that just before 3 o'clock this afternoon, we had a 911 call that came into our police dispatch notifying us of a gunshot wound victim. When officers arrived here at the scene, we located an adult female with a gunshot wound. Medics arrived and pronounced her deceased at the scene. Right now, I do not have any suspect information to release or to relay to the public, nor do we have a motive in this case. Any witnesses? At this, at this time, there's no witnesses that we can speak of. Okay. So as you uh, just heard from a detective, Misty Holly, a lot of unanswered questions in this case and right now actively looking for the person responsible for shooting and killing this woman uh, right here in Portsmouth about an hour ago and bring you, bring you much more information as it becomes available. Live in Portsmouth, Robert Boyd, 13 News Now. More breaking news this time in Virginia Beach. A motorcyclist is dead after an accident on West Neck Road. That is according to Virginia Beach Police. West Neck is closed between Jarvis Road and Indian River Road. We will continue to follow this breaking news and bring you updates as soon as we get them. Today's chilly temperatures are a result of yesterday's cold front that put on quite a show. This is video of a shelf cloud moving over the ocean in Kerala. It was sent to us by Gary Cornelison. Thanks, Gary. We appreciate that. An amazing photo there. We're seeing sporadic rain this afternoon. Evan, this wet weather is going to stick around for a while. Yeah, this damp weather will stick around. We'll see the shower activity start to diminish a little bit later on tonight, but we can't totally rule out isolated showers for the next few days, and that includes your Valentine's Day. Taking a look at the radar again, we've seen some of the steadier showers down across the areas of eastern North Carolina. We had a little bit more earlier and the main batch is pushing eastward and notice there are still a few stragglers out here. So again, we'll see a few isolated showers as we go through the evening and the overnight hours and the same thing for your Valentine's Day tomorrow. So as we take a look at temperatures outside right now, 30, uh, 43 degrees up in Williamsburg. It's 40 in Norfolk. Temperature coming in at 41 in Currituck, 39 in Melfa, and 42 down in Edenton. And as we go through the next several hours, we'll look for those temperatures to continue to drop just a little bit, generally down into the upper 30s. And notice still a 20% chance of rain for the next several hours as well. Now, when I come back, I'll talk about some big swings in temperatures, some big, big ups and downs. That's coming up in a few minutes. Terrifying moments for a store, store clerk in Newport News. Watch as a robbery suspect demands cash from the woman while holding a gun to her head. This happened just before midnight last night at J&G Food Mart on 27th Street. 13 News Now reporter Allie Weatherton is live outside of police headquarters. And Allie, the suspect got away. He did get away, Janet. He actually escaped through the back door. But yes, I want to get you to some of that video of the surveillance video. It can be hard to watch. It's really hard for me to watch. J&G Food Mart on 27th Street closes at 11 each and every night. This all happened around 1145 last night. Police say a victim was just the, about to head home, doing her last duty, taking out the garbage when the suspect grabbed her by the back door. He pulled her by her hand and forced the victim to open the register and put cash in his bag and also to give him cigarettes while holding a gun and a knife. Police say a co-worker was also there, but he was in the cooler area during the robbery and didn't even know it was going on. People who live in this area say that's scary. I feel so sorry for her because she's here trying to make an honest living and then she's terrorized at a job that doesn't even pay worth her life. Now, the woman did get cut on her arm, but she is expected to be OK. If you know the man in that surveillance video, make sure you call the crime line at 1-888-LOCK-YOU-UP. Now, coming up at 13 News Now at 5, hear from that victim and what she was thinking as that was all taking place. Live in Newport News, Allie Weatherton, 13 News Now.
As the cost of college keeps going up, one Virginia delegate wants a cap on in-state tuition. Just this year, in-state tuition and fees went up more than 5%. Compared to other states, Virginia universities rank the fourth highest for in-state tuition and fees. Ashburn delegate David Reed's bill would freeze the tuition at the 2017-18 rate for the next four years. That would give lawmakers and universities time to figure out how to keep costs down. I want to get it under control so that we can make sure that the students are going to be able to get out of college, not be burdened with a lot of debt, and then be able to begin their version of the American dream. The bill would not prevent out-of-state tuition costs from going up. A subcommittee voted for the bill's financial impact to be analyzed over the summer and reintroduced next session. Coming up on 13 News Now at 5, hear from one college student on the unique struggles he's facing while trying to pay his way through school. Today's the day the future of a bill to draw employers to rural and forgotten areas of Virginia will be decided. The House of Delegates is holding a final vote on the measure. It attempts to help poor areas by offering 10-year term corporate and personal income tax breaks. Those are for certain companies that meet specific criteria in 40 counties and six cities. The bill passed the Senate yesterday. The first real clues about Medicaid expansion's future in Virginia could come this Sunday. That's when the State House and Senate are expected to release their proposed state budget plans. Democrats have been pushing for the expansion while Republicans have been opposed to it. But GOP House Speaker Kirk Cox has opened the door to a potential bargain with Governor Ralph Northam. We're waiting to see if Medicaid will be expanded and if it is what that would look like. Well, right now, a lot of drivers are wondering why there are puddles inside the Midtown Tunnel. So we reached out to Elizabeth River Crossings to find out what's going on. 13 News Now reporter Elise Brown has the answer. There's a leak in the Midtown Tunnel. Elizabeth River Crossing says it's normal. It may be unusual to, uh, to a person's eye but the tunnel is safe. During the past three weeks, 13 News Now has recorded the leak inside the westbound tube that opened in 2016. We sent the video to ERC and engineers are going to fix the problem. CEO Philip Shuket says temperature swings can cause a thermal reaction in a newer concrete tunnel. Uh, and it may, um, may result in small accumulation of of water. Water drips from the ceiling and down the sides, leaving puddles. ERC says employees frequently check the tunnel. Shuket keeping an eye out as well. We're through there 24 7 with either operations people, the safety service patrol people, or our maintenance folks. He says they had a similar situation last summer. The plan for this leak to take down the ceiling tiles next week find the problem area and eject a solution that expands and contracts within any gaps. If you're out driving and spot an issue, ERC wants to hear from you. We have 100,000 cars a day going through all our all going through all of our facilities and first and foremost, we want that to be a safe trip for for all of our customers. Elise Brown, 13 News Now. Tonight, parents in Virginia Beach are petitioning a plan to put Thorogood Elementary School students in portable classrooms. Students would work in these classrooms while the new school is being built. Parents say the temporary campus is not secure enough. They want the school board to halt the plans until security concerns are resolved or an alternate plan is put in place. Parents are voicing their concerns at a school board meeting tonight at 6. Also at that meeting, the Virginia Beach School Board will discuss the superintendent's proposal proposed $770 million budget for next year. Under the plan, 12 more schools would get full-day kindergarten programs. The plan also adds 28 full-time teaching positions to help reduce class sizes. A final vote on the budget is expected next month before it heads to City Council. 13 News Now reporter Chinu Her will bring us live coverage from outside the meeting at 5 o'clock. Breaking right now, a federal judge has blocked President Trump's order to end the DACA program. The president announced back in September he was going to end DACA in March. DACA protects undocumented immigrants who were brought to the U.S. as children. The judge's ruling means states must continue processing new DACA applications and DACA renewal requests.